Welcome back to Budget and Bling, the series where we take the pre-constructed commander decks and upgrade them for a little or a lot. Today we're going to talk about Spirit Squadron and the Budget and Bling upgrades that I would make to make this deck immediately more competitive. And the video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Let's go through Spirit Squadron. We're going to upgrade it. But before we get into it, if you would, go down there, hit that like button if you like the video. By the end of it, hit that dislike button if you don't. Let's take a look at Millicent. Millicent Restless Revenant. A blue, a white, and five other for a 4-4 flying spirit soldier. It costs one less to cast for each spirit you control, and whenever Millicent Restless Revenant or another non-token spirit you control dies or deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. This deck out of the box is pretty focused. It's more focused than I'm used to with these pre-constructed decks right out of the box. It wants you to go spirit tribal with this. The ability of Millicent to constantly keep its own costs down by having spirits on the battlefield is fantastic, and the ability of Millicent to help rebuild your board after that board gets wiped or continue building it without committing more resources from your hand onto the battlefield, that's fantastic. We're gonna go through the budget and bling upgrades for this spirit tribal focused deck and make sure you stick around to the end. I'll tell you exactly which cards I would take out of the pre-constructed deck to replace with something more powerful. Let's take a look at the budget upgrades. We're going all in on Spirit Tribal here, so we're gonna start with Nico Ona. When it comes into play, you destroy target enchantment, and whenever you play a Spirit or Arcane spell, which we don't care about, you may return Nico Ona to its owner's hand. So every time we play a Spirit, we are going to get to return Nico Ona to our hand, and then recast it for three mana to destroy another target enchantment. One dollar for this uncommon, and I think it's fantastic in this deck. Any utility that you can get on a creature of the tribe, so, so important to your deck. Clarion Spirit here, two mana for a 2-2 two -two Spirit. Says whenever you cast your second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one -one White Spirit creature token with flying. Just more ways to build our board without necessarily always just committing a card from our hand. That second spell we cast gets a third permanent on the battlefield if both spells were permanents. Regardless, we're going to be growing more spirits onto the battlefield as we play. Another dollar card. This is an uncommon. You can definitely pick it up for cheap. Spirit Bonds is from M15. It's a two-mana enchantment. It says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you can pay one white. And if you do, put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token when flying onto the battlefield. So anytime you're casting creatures and they're making it to the battlefield for just one more white, we're also going to grow the number of spirits we have on the battlefield, further reducing Millicent's cost, even through commander tax, and allowing us to have a huge presence in the air. The second ability of Spirit Bonds, two mana, sack a spirit, target non-spirit creature, gains indestructible until end of the turn. That ability is not really going to apply to our deck, but I really do think that there's a lot of value here, especially when you're just trying to count the number of spirits on the battlefield. To only be paying one more mana to get a 1-1 flyer onto the battlefield, I'm a big fan of that. March of Souls is a five mana sorcery that says destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. For each creature destroyed this way, its controller puts a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying into play. Normally, you would want to run a better board wipe, but regrowing our side of the battlefield with spirits is more relevant to us than it is to our opponents and so i really like running this as a tribal board wipe in this deck i think it could be fun all those cards including empyrean eagle that we're about to talk about everything has just been a dollar so far very cheap cards to pick up empyrean eagle other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus one and it's got spirit in the creature type line. Fantastic. A dollar. Find yourself a foil for a couple more bucks. But this is the kind of anthem that you want in your deck to make that attacking line more potent. Guardian of Faith is from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It was printed right before this pre-con deck was printed. So I'm sure that's why they didn't include it. But it's totally worth including because it's got flash. And when it ETBs, any number of other target creatures you control phase out. So that doesn't mean leaves the battlefield. That doesn't mean it's going to wipe all your tokens off the battlefield. Everything just comes back or goes away exactly as it was. Guardian of Faith can save your entire line 
from a board wipe. It being the only thing that dies on your side of the battlefield if you cast it in response to a board wipe. Really like this with an attacking aggro creature based deck and it's got a relevant creature type to the entire mission that we're trying to go on here. $3 for Guardian of Faith, $4 for Spell Queller. It's a little counter spell. It's a little, it's like a slowdown spell. Three mana for a 2-3 Flash Flyer when it ETBs exile target spell with CMC 4 or less. Now, when it leaves the battlefield, they get to cast it without paying its mana cost. But you can sort of delay. You can say, I don't want that to happen right right now. At the very least, we're going to play a spirit onto the battlefield, and we're going to stop that 4CMC spell from even happening. This card saw a lot of play in Pioneer Spirits, but I do think it is relevant to play some of the best spirits in the Spirit Tribal deck. This is like the premier one now. Millicent's my favorite for this. Skyclave Apparition is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two core spirit that ETBs and exiles up to one target non-land, non-token permanent we don't control with CMC 4 or less. Now, when it leaves, the card's owner creates an XX where X was the CMC of the exiled card, but we don't really care about that. If we can ace some permanent that they really wanted on the battlefield, we'll give them whatever XX token they want, 4-4 four, four or less. Yeah, we don't care about that. Most of our spirits are going to be flying in the air anyway, so this is just removal utility built into a spirit. Selfless Spirit's a 2-mana two 2-1 two, flying, and that ability is the reason that I want it in this deck. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn when we sacrifice Selfless Spirit. Six dollars for Selfless Spirit, but this is the kind of card that you want to run in a creature deck. Hands down, it's already a good creature in a creature-based deck, period, especially when it is of the tribe that we are building all of the synergies around. And lastly, in the budget section, for six dollars, I would pick up Trade Win rider we're going to be creating a lot of creature tokens with this one and so we're going to be able to use the rider's ability to tap and tap two other creatures you control to return target permanent to its owner's hand we can just eot that that's going to get very obnoxious there's no clause like return it unless they pay one or something like that it just straight up taps tap two of our token spirits and return permanence to an owner's hand it itself is a spirit really good for this deck and i think it could cause a lot of disruption on the table as for the bling upgrades, let's start with Deadeye Navigator. It's a $10 card, and it's good because it comes in and soul bonds with another creature, and as long as they're paired, each of those creatures has pay to exile it, return it to the battlefield under your control. You can pair this with, like, a good creature with a great ETB. You can just pair this, say, with your commander if you don't want it to be aced. It's just two mana if it's getting targeted removaled. Exile it, then return it. It comes in. It's not the target of that removal spell any longer. Helps you save your line. Helps you save your important creatures. There is a bit of go wide in this deck. Like you wouldn't want to pair this to a creature token, for example. That would go very poorly. But targeting your, your commander with this ability and being able to get it out of a tight targeted removal spot, that could be very good. Cemetery Illuminator came out at the same time as these pre-con decks in the main set. When it ETBs or attacks, you exile a card from a graveyard. You get to look at the top card of your library anytime, and then once per turn, you can cast a spell from the top of your library if it shares a card type with a card exiled with Cemetery Illuminator. So if you can ace an instant or ace a creature something out of their graveyard you'll be able to cast those instants or cast those creatures off the top of your library if you're building a really creature heavy tribe synergy deck i would say go for a creature first with cemetery illuminator that's going to let you look at the top card of your library and play those creatures off the top of your library if you want to a lot of the spirits are pretty low CMC, so that could be a good way to really pop off on a turn and play multiple things off the top of your library without worrying about emptying your hand too, too much. Kindred Discovery is a $21 enchantment. When it ETBs, you choose a creature type. Whenever a creature you control the chosen type ETBs or attacks, you get to draw a card. This could be huge. This could be enormous. I like to build up a nice attacking line of whatever the tribe is that I'm playing this in, because obviously it's a tribal card, and then play this, move to attack, swing, and you get to draw a bunch of cards. doesn't matter if they get through. All it is is an attack trigger. Kindred Discovery at 21 bucks is fantastic, and you absolutely should run it if you've got the budget. What needs to be said about Teferi's protection? It phases out everything. Your life total can't change. You've got protection from everything. It's a fantastic way to protect your attacking line, even especially if it's tokens. Everything's phasing out. 
Teffrey's protection is $22 right now. I definitely think that this is a bling upgrade to this deck if you already don't have it. Now, if we're talking about bling upgrades, let's talk about upgrading some of the lands. Mystic Gate at $27 is going to let you pay either color of mana to filter it into both colors of mana in either combination, white, 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 blue, or blue, blue. Flooded Strand is $35. It's the fetch land specifically in blue and white. And then Sea of Clouds is $16. It's the two or more opponents land in blue or white from battle bond so if you want to spend some money to upgrade the mana base of this deck mystic gate flooded strand sea of clouds is definitely a great way to go and then anointed procession 33 bucks for this enchantment if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control it creates twice that many of those tokens instead i mean millicent itself is creating white spirit creature tokens on our death triggers and on our combat damage dealt triggers so this is the absolute pinnacle of the kind of card that you would want to spend some money on to really up the power level of this deck. So let's talk about the cuts. I would start with the Planeswalker that's included, Dovin Grand Arbiter. It's fine. I get what they were going for here. That plus one, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on it. So you could potentially drop this right before you're about to make a big swing and put a bunch of loyalty counters on Dovin to then use that minus seven and look at the top 10 of your library, put three cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. It's fine. I just don't really like this Planeswalker in a deck like this. It's really low, low loyalty. In general, I don't like Planeswalkers, but if you do, by the way, want a Planeswalker in the deck, Vincer Sojourner, I think, is a little bit better. That minus one, this is a fantastic just five mana spell, basically, to go minus one, say creatures are unblockable this turn, and that could be a win condition right there. 16 bucks for Vincer, so I'm using, I'm doing a bling upgrade in the cut section, but if we're going to take out the Planeswalker, I wanted to give you an option, so you could leave a Planeswalker in there if you wanted to. Boreas Charger, I'm just not a huge fan of this card. It's in a lot of the pre-con decks. When it leaves, you get to choose an opponent who controls more lands than you, and then you get to search your library for a number of planes equal to the difference, but one onto the battlefield the rest in your hand so it just has to it has to leave the battlefield first and you then you need an opponent that's got more lands than you and that's not that difficult to pull off but again i just don't like this like once we fulfill this thing and we fulfill this thing then maybe we'll get this thing and it's not even super great if all of them came onto the battlefield that would be ridiculous but i think that would actually be a little broken so it also not having spirit as a creature type just led me to an axe on this one. Similar thing with Knight of the White Orchid. I always find myself holding this card in my hand, waiting for the right time to play it. And sometimes it never comes and then it's late and it's a 2-2 first striker. It's not even a relevant creature type. I just don't want it in this deck. Kurtar's Wrath. We already put a different board wipe in here that I think is a little bit better. It's six mana to destroy all creatures and they can't be regenerated here with Kurtar's Wrath. And then if you've got Threshold, you also get two 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. It's fine. This is one that you could think about leaving in if you've got a creature heavy meta and you need to wipe the board a lot. Kurtar's Wrath is synergistic to the deck. I just think that the one that we talked about is a little bit better. I straight up don't like Flood of Tears, especially in a deck that's creating a lot of tokens. It seems like, you know, we're returning everything to our hand and then we can put a permanent card onto the battlefield, but all of our tokens are just evaporating. So any of our hard work in that direction is just getting exiled. So I don't like Flood of Tears in this deck in particular. Distant Melody, this freaking card. This card pops up in all of these pre-cons that are tribal and blue. And it's just like, y'all, if you want card draw, you're already in blue. Why do you need a spell that might fizzle if you don't have any creatures on the battlefield? If your board has been wiped and you're in top deck mode, you draw this, it's going to feel real bad. So I just don't like Distant Melody in any of these decks. We've also got Verity Circle in here. There's a partner wombo combo that lets you tap things, and if they got tapped without attacking, you get to put plus one, plus one counters on that creature. Verity Circle kind of plays into that, but those aren't our commanders. This card definitely goes in the 99 of that deck, but I just don't like it in the 99 of Millicent, especially when we could free up some space for one of our spirit or one of our very powerful cards like Anointed Procession. And then lastly, Ghostly Prison. It's a fine defensive card, but in this deck, I don't really think I want to be super defensive. We're going to be creating a lot of 1-1 one, one chump blockers anyway, so stopping some attacks from playing this permanent doesn't seem that relevant to the deck's overall goal. Let me know how you're building Spirit Squadron. Let me know if any of these upgrades or cuts 
helped you out by hitting that subscribe button. That would really help us out. If you want to get involved with the channel on a deeper level, check out our Patreon. Other than that, I'm tapped out and we'll catch you later.